must take your place in the circle of life. The first line of The Lion King belongs to its villain, Scar, who utters a very relatable observation. Life's not fair, is it? And in fact, this whole story is about the universal rite of passage of learning that life really isn't fair. Scar is annoyed by the social hierarchy that puts him in an inferior position to his seemingly less deserving nephew. When I'm king, what'll that make you? A monkey's uncle. But this kid who has everything soon loses the center of his universe as his beloved father dies a horrible death right before his eyes. So the Lion King swiftly and harshly breaks it to kids that sometimes life sucks. Not only do you have to reckon with where you fall on the food chain, but even if you do get to be king, you're not exempt from the suffering and loss that's inherent to our mortal existence. The circle of life is just as much a circle of death. For you to grow up and become an independent adult, your parents have to get older and eventually pass away. Darkness is woven into everything that's light. So what actually made The Lion King so vivid and life-changing for 90s kids is it's not afraid to go to some dark places. Simba, what have you done? The movie's enduring success proves that kids want stories that make sense of life's difficulties instead of censoring them out. It doesn't matter. It's in the past. <laughs> yeah, but it still hurts. Oh yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. So here's our take on why the brilliance of The Lion King comes from inviting darkness into the Disney picture. Before we go on, we have some exciting news. We're now creating stories on Amino. We've been wanting to experiment for a while with fun new formats and shorter content. So we decided to partner with Amino to do this because stories on Amino are different from stories anywhere else. They're still fun and quick, but they don't disappear. Right now on Amino, you can check out our two brand new video essay style quizzes. Click the link in our description or search for Amino apps to download Amino. Then search for The Take. Every time you watch a story, you're supporting us. So follow us on Amino today. The brutal, tragic death of the good King Mufasa no doubt traumatized many of us as kids. Long live the king. Removing the parents from the fictional equation subtly empowers young viewers to think about being independent and self-reliant. But rarely do we witness the actual death of the character's parents. A big exception to this is one of The Lion King's key inspirations, Bambi, a story set in motion by the heartbreaking loss of Bambi's mother at the hands of hunters. In Lion King, Mufasa's demise is even more shocking due to the visceral, immersive experience we take in through the eyes of the son who, until now, thought his dad was invincible. But you're not scared of anything. Then, while Simba is still processing the unfathomable, Dad, we gotta go home. The horror is doubled by the psychological torment Scar inflicts, persuading the poor boy he's to blame for his own father's death. But the king is dead, and if it weren't for you, he'd still be alive. After this point, the journey that follows for Simba is about learning how to reckon with the role of pain and injustice in our lives. This is actually something Simba's society has failed to do too. The Pride Lands don't acknowledge evil, wrongdoing, or ill intentions. All this badness is ignored and pushed out of sight, as symbolized by the Shadowlands, which are explicitly rejected by Mufasa's kingdom. What about that shadowy place? That's beyond our borders. You must never go there, Simba. Mufasa doesn't explain what this disturbing place is, or why it's not a part of their kingdom, so Simba is poorly equipped to deal with it. You can't do anything to me. Uh, technically they can. We are on their land. Just as he later responds to tragedy by running from it and suppressing his feelings. It doesn't matter. Hakuna Matata. What? Hakuna Matata. It's something I learned out here. Look, sometimes bad things happen. Simba. And there's nothing you can do about it. So why? 
worry. He's been given no means of addressing the unpleasant, apart from pushing it away. As perfect as Mufasa seems as a king, his failing is not recognizing the existence and role of darkness in the kingdom. He's aware of his brother's ill will. Don't turn your back on me, Scar. Oh no, Mufasa. Perhaps you shouldn't turn your back on me but won't think too deeply about it. He minimizes the seriousness of the problem. What am I going to do with him? He'd make a very handsome throw rug. Sazu. This naive refusal to face ugly truths makes the kingdom weak, untested. The godlike level of power of this absolute monarch Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Could easily be abused by a less benevolent and selfless leader. Eventually, Scar brings literal darkness to take over the Pride Lands. Now, to return and take his rightful place, Simba has to understand the evil in the Pride Lands in order to vanquish it. And by confronting the darkness as his father never did, he at last becomes an even stronger king. His time away and his suffering make him able to defeat Scar when Mufasa couldn't. All right. I did it so they can hear you. It's also no coincidence that Scar, one of Disney's most popular villains, is one of its most sardonically vicious. That hairball is my son and your future king. Oh, I shall practice my curtsy. And ideologically terrifying. Be for the cool of the century. Be prepared for the murkiest scam. The be prepared visuals explicitly compare Scar to Hitler by echoing Lenny Riefenstahl's triumph of the will. Scar's ultimate darkness makes the Lion King's light shine all the brighter. We can read the plot of The Lion King as a symbolic story about trauma and the road to healing and self-realization. Simba's name just means lion in Swahili, so he is THE lion, the self of this story. The physical space of the Pride Lands reflects the state of Simba's self at any given point. As the name Pride Lands suggests, a strong self relies on taking positive pride in your actions and the group you're responsible to, like a pride of lions. But when selfish, vain ego, the negative version of pride, is in charge, the space of the self is ravaged, becoming a gloomy graveyard. The villain of this story is actually named Scar, so he represents that bitterness of holding on to resentment over hardships you've experienced. Well, I was first in line until the little hairball was born. And within the story, we can read this character as embodying Simba's scar. The festering, guilt-infested wound formed by his father's death becomes so potent it takes over the whole Pride Lands, the visualization of his inner self, and kills off all growth there. Simba runs away from that land, i.e. from himself. You have forgotten me. No. How could I? You have forgotten who you are and so forgotten me. And starts acting like a different animal than he really is. Slimy? It's satisfying. Simba's behavior matches the textbook portrait of a trauma victim. He exemplifies symptoms like shock and denial, withdrawing from others, feeling sad, hopeless, and disconnected, and blaming oneself. It's my fault. It's my fault. When he looks up at the stars and senses the ghost of his father looking down on him, Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. He turns away because he's ashamed he's not being himself. When Simba sees Mufasa in his reflection but denies this, That's not my father. It's just my reflection. No. Look hard. On one level, he's saying he's not worthy of being a king, even if he looks like one. But others see that he is a king, and that's why they mistake him for his father. Mufasa. Rafiki, a name which means friend, represents wisdom. He translates and reminds Simba of his father's guidance to help him become a fully realized self. And what this requires is for Simba to confront his past, which means battling the scar that all this time has been telling him the bad thing that happened to him was his fault. If it weren't for you, Mufasa would still be alive. It's your fault he's dead. Do you deny it? No. Then you're 
guilty. Once he's liberated from the falsehood that he's to blame for his own trauma, Simba is finally able to destroy the wound that has terrorized him for so long. Everything you ever told me was a lie. And the closing scene of Simba looking over the replenished land is an image of the healthy, complete self connected to the friends and family who are a key part of him, ready to bring new life into the world now that he's inwardly prospering, stable, and stronger thanks to the trials he's overcome. The king has returned. There is also a second universal symbolic story in The Lion King about the darkness that's inherent to the passage into adulthood. Simba's I Want Song, the number that in many Disney movies clearly expresses the character's deepest desire, tells us he wants to be king. And he doesn't want to wait. He wants to be king right now. Oh, I But what he doesn't realize is that with these words, he's actually wishing for the death of his father. Because for Simba to become king, his father must pass away. Dad? Mm. We're pals, right? <laughs> right. And we'll always be together, right? Later on, his fear that he did unconsciously will his father's death may be part of why Simba continues to feel guilty, even long after he's an adult who should be able to grasp how Scar manipulated him. And this issue of guilt over replacing one's father doesn't just apply to the royals. In every boy's life, the moment of greatest joy and greatest sorrow is when he defeats his father for the first time. Think of the Oedipus complex, which includes the idea that a son feels instinctual competition with the father. Sooner or later, the son eclipses the father. It's the natural order. Yet, it's frequently a stumbling block because the son's competitive stirrings are accompanied by tremendous feelings of guilt. I see. Yes, it's, it's the classic Oedipal conflict. My God. It seems so obvious now. Simba's terrible revelation that his own independence entails his father's demise is like any of us realizing that the closer we move toward adult self-determination, the closer our parents inch toward the grave. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. On closer inspection, the main thing Simba looks forward to about being king is the same one a child looks forward to about being an adult. No one says stop that! You don't no one says see here! Now see here! Having autonomy, instead of being told what to do all the time. We don't run around all day! Well, that's definitely out. The lion's exile represents that adolescent or post-adolescent period when the youth has to leave home and seek new experiences to develop a fully formed identity apart from everyone who knows him. I'm telling you, Kev, this is the great life. No rules, no responsibilities. Ooh, the little green film kind. He also needs time away from his best friend, Nala. I can't marry her. She's my friend. Yeah, it'd be too weird. So they can see each other as adult romantic partners. But ultimately, this lion isn't satisfied with his friend's carefree life. You are more than what you have become. He feels the need for a greater responsibility. Because it's your responsibility! Which is what adulthood really is. The final scene, a mirror of the first, with Simba replacing his father, is bittersweet. Though peace is restored and Simba has become a good, wise king, this progress is made possible only by the previous generation's death. When we die, our bodies become the grass, and the antelope eat the grass. And so, we are all connected in the great circle of life. The unsettling and mature themes present in The Lion King partly come from the literary classics that inform the story, especially Shakespeare's Hamlet. When they were working on The Lion King, the creators nicknamed it Bamblet a combination of Bambi and Hamlet, and it has plenty in common with Shakespeare's play. Young Prince Hamlet is visited by his father's ghost, and struggles with suspicions that his uncle may have killed his father. Like Hamlet, Simba is plagued by indecision. I am pigeon livered and lack gold! When this lion starts living like a herbivore far down on the food chain, 
it appears to Nala like he's gone mad. What's happened to you? You're not the Simba I remember. Just as Hamlet puts on a show of madness as a cover while he decides what to do. Now this be madness, yet there is method in it. So what's the point of translating the complexities of Shakespeare for kids? Oh, your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his. Perhaps what's most compelling and enduring about Hamlet is that it so articulately captures adolescent doubts and concerns. Why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. Nay, it is. I know not seems. Hamlet's obsession with insincere appearances is every adolescent's fixation on authenticity. You're phony! Like everyone else! I want people to like the real me. In Scar, we can also see the influence of Shakespeare's Richard III, which features an eerily charismatic villain offering the audience a privileged view into his secret machinations. Shall I be plain? I wish the bastards dead. And Macbeth, the cautionary tale of ambition about a man who plots the murder of his king and is later unsettled by the vision of a ghost. Thou canst not say that I did it! His highness is not well. Father, no, you're dead. Aside from Shakespearean echoes, The Lion King takes after the biblical story of Joseph. Simba and Joseph are favored children cast out into exile due to the envy of family members. Each evolves from the carefree, blessed youth into the smart, savvy adult who is informed by the darkness he's lived through. The difficult truth underpinning this narrative is that no one gets to remain in that state of pure love and light. Sooner or later, we're all exiled from Eden. Simba and Joseph have to learn, too, that even our closest family may hate us. Simba, Simba, I'm only looking out for the well-being of my favorite nephew. This is an incredibly sad thing to understand, that the most vicious darkness often doesn't come from far away, but from those nearest and dearest to our hearts. I'd hate to be responsible for the death of a family member. Wouldn't you agree, Simba? And from within ourselves, too. You said you'd always be there for me! But you're not. And it's because of me. In recent years, more and more people have revisited The Lion King to say, essentially, what if Scar had a point? I'm surrounded by idiots. The rigid social hierarchy in the movie allows for no progress. You're born into your place, and there's something wrong with you if you try to change that. Why, if it isn't my big brother descending from on high to mingle with the commoners? Privileged little Simba does kind of act like an entitled brat. I'm gonna be king of Pride Rock. Oh, goody. My dad just showed me the whole kingdom. And I'm gonna rule it all. Even Mufasa can't help indulging the boy's obnoxious side at times. <laughs> That's very good. And when we hear Simba talk about his future reign, he sounds like a tyrant in waiting. He's the future king. Yeah. So you have to do what I tell you. Not yet, I don't. And with an attitude like that, I'm afraid you're shaping up to be a pretty pathetic king indeed. Hmm. He sings with excitement of being in the spotlight. Everywhere you look, I getting more attention even than any other king has. Gonna be the main event, like no king was before. And how he's practicing looking down on others. I'm brushing up, I'm looking down. So Scar's not wrong to find baby Simba irritating. Well, forgive me for not leaping for joy. But it's not like the uncle has any problem with inequality. He just wants to be on top himself. Scar's style of rulership is exactly the nightmare immature Simba describes. I thought a king can do whatever he wants. Well, I am the king. I can do whatever I want. In a modern context, we might notice that the Lion King bears a striking resemblance to Black Panther. Like Simba, T'Challa struggles after the loss of his father. He also has a supportive mom and a fierce love who's more capable than he is. Ha! <laughs> Wakanda is strong enough to help others and protect ourselves at the same time. Like Scar, Eric Killmonger spouts valid critiques of society's injustice. It's about two billion people all over the world that looks like us, but their lives are a lot harder. Wakanda has the tools to liberate them all. We shall rise to greet the dawning of a new era in which lion and hyena come together. 
And audiences find both characters so compelling in part because it's hard not to agree with their takedowns of a rigid, hierarchical society that excludes some from prosperity. But though Scar and Eric correctly identify a problem, the only solutions these characters offer are hatred, anger, and destruction. So the conflicted young ruler has to find a way to address long-standing inequality and injustice while preserving the delicate balance of a productive and life-affirming culture. More connects us than separates us. What Mufasa tries to teach young Simba is that, while the food chain ruling our day-to-day -day puts predators on top and prey on the bottom, the deeper reality is that the king is no better than the lowest in his kingdom. Everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. As king, you need to understand that balance and respect all the creatures, from the crawling ant to the leaping antelope. Death is the great equalizer. Even if the Pride Lands could be a little more open to social mobility, the film isn't really trying to say that some people are destined for greatness and some aren't. It's saying that we have to earn our place, even and especially if it's given to us. Oh, there's more to being king than getting your way all the time. To be fair to Mufasa, he does, in the limited time he has, start teaching Simba lessons in resilience. So whenever you feel alone, just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you. And so will I. He tries to prepare Simba for his own eventual death by presenting the silver lining to the darkness that, while our parents pass away, they live on through us. He lives in you. As much as it hurts to understand the true meaning of the circle of life and how painfully temporary all of this is, the best we can do to honor our lost loved ones is to realize our full potential and pass their wisdom onto the next generation. Teach our children to be brave and equip them to face the shadows. I laugh in the face of danger. <laughs>